Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome uh, to today's Volta TST. Uh, thanks for joining. As usual, the call is public and recorded and will be shared live on uh, YouTube. So please be mindful of uh, the comments you make and the uh, information uh, you share. Um, so this is the 2021 agenda, not the... Okay, so first of all, um, the main topic of today, I uh, would like uh, Amit uh, Ghosh from uh, um, Gradisys, and then is working with the Deutsche Telekom team, uh, to present his do design document on uh, fiber to the building basement uh, um, that uh, he started to integrate uh, FTTB into Volta and, uh, and the ONS apps. Uh, Amit, how do you want to do it? Do you want to take it away on your screen or should I share the document? Yeah, thanks, Andre. Uh, yeah, so I will uh, take on the share and uh, present it. Uh, sounds good. Go ahead. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Amit, and I'll be talking on the proposed uh, FTTB implementation in Volta. Uh, along with me, I see Abhilash from Radisys has also joined the call and uh, he has also contributed to uh, a lot of this uh, design part of things, especially uh, within the adapters. So he'll be talking uh, over those once we reach that part. So uh, I think this document is accessible to everyone. Uh, we have had quite a few comments uh, going to and fro on this already, and I would request everyone to uh, also uh, have a look into the details whenever they can and share their uh, comments on this. So uh, just on an overall uh, of flow of the document, uh, first we have the very high level workflow that is uh, envisioned at uh, Dutch Telecom. And then we have uh, a high level breakdown of the work items that we see. And then we have the design details where we first talk about uh, the concept in terms of the VLAN management that is needed. And then we talk about the flow rules. Uh, what are the proposed flow rules that would be needed to achieve this kind of uh, configuration? And then we talk about some of the changes that might be needed, uh, that would be needed on the ONOS applications. And finally, we talk about uh, the changes that uh, would be needed in the adapters. And also in the appendix, we have the uh, code, which would be used to generate the, the figures that you see uh, in this diagram, because some of them are just uh, too small to talk about anything visually. So I've taken the, for example, uh, the snippet from here and put it on plantext.com and uh, you're able to see the diagram here, which is the same as the workflow here, which is pasted here. So let's go through this to start with, right? So, um, so here we uh, to talk about three specific workflows. What happens when a DPU is powered on uh, when a FTTB subscriber is removed and what happens when a DPU is powered off. Uh, please feel free to interrupt me anytime you have a question uh, or if you want, you could uh, hold on to your questions till we cover a section and then you could add those. So <clears throat> if you look into uh, this diagram, we have the usual suspects there, OLT, OLT adapter, ONU adapter, RW core, and ONOS. Uh, and then you have the DPU as well. Uh, for the other two items, VAP and PAW, you can just uh, think of them as upper layer uh, components, which are users of, which are acting as users or of ONOS and RW Core. So they are exercising the APIs that are available on ONOS slash ONOS apps and RW Core. So uh, when a DPU is powered on, so for all practical purposes, the way uh, we see the DPU is just as another pawn device, right? Or as another ONU on the pawn. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, yeah, so before we go to this, so the DPU, through the DPU, right? There would be two kinds of traffic. 
that uh, we need to switch. One is uh, traffic, which is for the management of the DPU itself. And then there is another kind of traffic, which is the end subscriber traffic. Now, um, the traffic, which is for the management of uh, the DPU itself, again, has two different parts. One is the DPU management, which happens uh, over uh, NetConf VM by its PMA. And uh, another traffic, which is, uh, which is carrying basically the ANCP protocol. So, um, and both of these uh, are visualized to be happening on two separate VLANs. This traffic would be single tagged. Whereas the end subscriber traffic would be the same as the FTTH uh, Dutch Telecom workflow, which is double tagged. So with that background, so when a DPU is added, so it appears like any other ONU on the phone and through the adapters, it gets uh, reported as an event to one of the uh, higher level uh, management entities. Uh, it's called VAP in this case. And then VAP and POW, they work together and through the serial number of the ONU, they are able to figure out that this is actually a DPU, right? Or the ONU part of a DPU. So this, this intelligence is there in the management plane that based on the serial number, it's able to differentiate between a FTTH ONU versus an ONU, which is part of the DPU. So once it recognizes that, it would ask ONOS to add flow rules to switch the management and ANCP traffic from this particular DPU. Now, uh, the management and ANCP, as I said, would be on two separate VLANs, but this VLAN would be the same for each DPU model. So if we say uh, DPU from vendor XYZ, the management might say come on VLAN 10 and ANCP might come on VLAN 20. But for another vendor, this 10 and 20 might be other values. Right. So, so the, and also uh, what the operator wants is that instead of this 10 and 20, when the traffic goes out of the OLT towards the leaf switch on the NNI interface, this 10 and 20 are changed to a value that the operator wants say 10 and 20 becomes 100 and 200. So this configuration, which we will see in the details uh, later on, would be passed to the ONOS uh, application saying that, okay, uh, this, this logical port, the ONU, or this logical port at the management and ANCP switching rules, uh, the incoming bits would be 10 and 20, and uh, the outgoing bits should be 100 and 200 respectively. And we will see what we expect the ONOS app to do, right? And then ONOS app would yeah, push the flows down to RW core, and RW core would uh, send it to the adapters and then the adapters would allocate the decontent jump ports and push the flows to uh, OIT. The OIT adapter would do that, and uh, the OIT adapter would also do the resource allocation and pass the info uh, to the OMU adapter. OMU adapter would work on the flows and over OMCI uh, at the configuration at the ONU. So this is at a high level for the uh, DPU. Uh, management and ANCP uh, flow rules. Uh, just a quick question, uh, uh, Amit. Yeah. Uh, on the top there, you put uh, you put a port up through Volta. Yeah. Uh, I guess you didn't put all the details there. Uh, yeah. Does it mean it goes all the way from core to ONOS, and they, it's actually ONOS that invoked VAP? Um, no, so actually what happens is you're correct, right? There are a lot of details there. so. One part of it is that, that the logical port shows up at ONOS. Mm -hmm. And also the events that are generated by the adapters on the Kafka bus, 
right? So this guy VAP would, uh, would depend on both of that. So it would depend on the events generated by the adapters on the Kafka bus, as well as the events generated by uh, owners on the Kafka bus. So even the owners has a Kafka integration, right? So only okay. once both of them are available at VAP, uh, it would take further action. Ah, uh, okay. So, so you, so, so posting on on the Kafka bus at the adapter level, uh, it would be like in this case, I guess the when you adapt that will post that event, and then uh, on the, the core will will tell the owners that here's a new logical point. Yes. But VAP, but VAP will not do anything until it sees a an event on Kafka from the ONU adapter. And then yeah. even on Kafka from owners, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. And uh, Amit, uh, yeah. may I ask a question? Uh, yes. How many ports are there on a DPU? So it depends on the model of the DPU, right? So uh, what is being talked about are support for four port, eight port, and 16 port DPUs. Are the services on all these ports same, has same text? And in your example, all of them are 10 and 12? Uh, no, no. So, uh, so hang on. So the DPU has uh, one in an I port, right? Which is, which is on the PON interface. Okay. And it has either four or eight or 16 G dot fast ports. So here, what we talked about is the traffic which is generating from inside the DPU, the DPU's own management traffic. So here we are not really talking about the uniports or the G dot fast ports yet. So okay, the so VLANs that we are talking about is just for the DPU management traffic, and it is only on that one uh, NNI interface of the DPU or the PON port of the DPU. Okay. Okay. Then the, I mean the ports, the port up here is is it the NNI? For port? The, for the DPU itself, so it's it's basically the the DPU shows up as uh, another ONU, right? And in the FTTH parlance, it is a one is to one mapping, right? You have one ONT and one subscriber, and that's why it's called a port up for the subscriber. Here, the port up means that the DPU has shown up and not really the end subscriber. So Onus doesn't know anything about the new showing up. The only thing that Onus knows about is the uni port showing up. Yes. Or the NNI port showing up. That's so, that's correct. But so which, which port is this one? If it's not a subscriber port, which port is showing up to pop in the yes. DPU phase? So the when you so the DPU, as I said, is composed of two parts, right? One is the G dot fast switching Mac, and the other is the integrated ONU part. And this ONU inside of the DPU has only a single uni. And this, this uni is the uni that shows up at ONU, which is the uni of the DPU, or the ONU part of the DPU. Okay, the, the, there is a physical port that is basically used for management, and that's the one that shows up here. Uh, I know. Theo, what, what Amit is saying is that the DPU is effectively, you, you can think it about as like, like a switch that then in one of the ports has a transceiver. And that transceiver on one side is the NNI GPON port. And on the other side towards the switch is uh, this, what we could call the UNI port of that ONU. So you could think of this as two separate devices, one ONT, with like one GPON port and a um, CAT5 Ethernet port on the other side, and then something else, which is the other DPU, which is managed by NetConf and everything that is plugged into the Ethernet port of the ONT. That's, that's correct. Yeah. They're actually the same box, but they are separate. Okay, the physical so, same. So in that case, this port up, are we talking about the port up for the on the pawn side of things or the port up on the uni side of things or it's in, in a way it, it meant it means both uh you could say it is the uni side of the uh, ONU. it's the, yeah 
Okay, so it's because if it's a uni side, then you'll get a logical port going to yes. all this. If it's a pawn, you won't get anything. Yeah, it's it's the uni side. Okay. Uh, is there any anything on the on if the uni side is up, uh, does it automatically kind of mean that the pawn side is up as well? Uh, because I'm 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 just wondering, like, uh, because it's the way all those uh, like for example when 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 we figure out like how to send flows and stuff like that, uh, there should be a pawn a pawn port on the ONU that is connected to a pawn port on the OLT. So in this configuration, will there be a another port up for the pawn side uh, for the ONU? No, oh, it's it's the same as FTTH, right? So if you take the case of FTTH and you have an ONU with a single uni, it's exactly the same. Okay, so so there would be two points up. No, there would be a single. So so the port up here, it's it's more of uh, AP or DT internal. <laughs> Or what do you say, a terminology. So effectively, what it means is that the ONU uh, and the uni of the ONU is up, what we have in okay. the but the, but the process of, of uh, saying that the pawn side of things is up, there mm -hmm. will also be an event from that, right? Yes. So, so, so actually, what happens is that there are two events, right? One is the ONT discovery event. Right, mm -hmm. when the ONU first comes in. So that is one event that goes to VAP. And then you have the ONT activation event, right? After the ONU has been activated by uh, by the OLT adapter, right? So both of those events are taken into account as well as the logical port being enabled at ONOS, which happens after the ONT is activated. So in, in reality, all these three events, only when all the three are checked, marked yes, that is when uh, the port up really happens from VAP to PAW. So here, just for simplicity, I just rolled it up into a port up through volt up. So in reality, it's all those three events that are flowing through the multiple components and making their way to VAP. Yeah, I understand that that part. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm just want to make sure that there is an event somewhere that says the pawn side of that ONU is connected to the pawn side of that OLT. Because that's how we will figure out like if there's a flow is coming in to know like where to send that flow. So that's the discovery event, right? So that's the first event that comes into the OLT adapter saying that, okay, a new a new is seen on this point board. That's Guys, discovery event. if I may simplify this, and I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. but effectively, this has no change in the process discovery from an actual ONT for FTTH. We're just treating the port differently a little bit because we need to install the flows for management in the NCP. But from a Volta discovery perspective, this is just yet another thing. Well, that's, exactly. that's not what the diagram says, because in a normal discovery of a Volta port, there is no VAP between the core and ONUS. There is OF agent that propagates the port up event ones. There is no Kafka bus involved. There is no external system involved. So, so uh, guys, I'm sorry, but don't... Uh... Don't treat this port up here the same as the port up we talk about in Volta. As I said, this port hyphen up in uppercase is a it, it has a different meaning. In, in that is the Kafka way. event, effectively, yeah. Amit, right? Yeah. So may, maybe for, for 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 completeness, you can change this uh, in uh, to uh, to better reflect just pure Volta. I would appreciate that not having VAP in there. I agree with Theo. Uh, but from a, from a Volta Onos workflow perspective, as mm -hmm. far as I understand, to simplify this and get over this initial thing, because otherwise we don't get to the whole document this meeting, it, this is just a pure ONT up. 
then we will have to figure out that that port is not exactly an, a subscriber port, but is a, a, a way to get into the DPU. But that's mm -hmm. a, a little bit of a separate discussion. From a port top perspective, the set of events that you're going to get when an ONT with a, a, a GPON, a single ETH uh, port UNI for FTTH comes up is the exact same as this one. Yes, for all practical purposes, a Volta just sees a, an ONT with a single uni. It doesn't know anything else about it. Isn't the same the same things it knows in an FTTH case, it's the same in the even in this case. You're correct, Andrew. So is this Kafka event, port of Kafka event exist currently in Volta? Uh, guys, I'm sorry, as, uh, as I'm saying, just ignore this port up thing. As I said, it's rolled up. It's a roll up of multiple different events. So you have the ONT discovery event, the ONT activation event, as well as the Kafka event on the Onos bus. All of okay, them combined but, together but, and representing it as Porta. Okay, but all existing in water currently. Yes, yes. Yes, there is no need to change any of that, uh, yeah. Mahir, you're correct. Yeah, those events already exist. And th this is exactly how the FTTH workflow for the Stilcom works as of today. So this the first two arrows are exactly the same. Nothing is nothing is new. Okay, uh, should we move on to the subscriber uh, part of it? Yes, please. Okay. So here again, uh, I would not go into this box, right? But at some point of time, somehow the management plane uh, decides or right, that subscribers need to be added to this DPU. And the API on ONOS will be called to add the specific subscribers on the DPU with two tags. One is called as the ANP tag and the other is called as the S tag or the subscriber tag. We will come to uh, those tags uh, a little later as we go to that. And then again, uh, the remaining flow remains the same. Onos has to create the flows, right? And push it down to RW core. RW core uh, decomposes those and flows it to the adapters, uh, sends it to the adapters. Adapters, uh, uh, OLT adapter creates the resources, passes it on to a new adapter, and they provision the flows. So I think at this point, rather than going into the removal and uh, loss of pawn kind of scenarios, it might be better that we uh, start looking into some of this uh, uh, details here. So I think first thing what we can look into is in the SADIS app, right? What is the information that we would want to store? So the, in the SADIS app, uh, each entry is stored uh, on a per logical port basis, right? And the logical port here is the DPU itself, right? Which showed up as a logical port in Onas. So here, what I've proposed is that inside the subscriber and device information, we add a new item called FTTB uh, device information. Uh, this will be populated only when it is a DPU device, right, in the database, in the SADIS database. If it is not a DPU device, this will be nil. And so you, you don't look into it. But inside of that, you have uh, four VLANs two each for the DPU management and two for the ANCP management. And this is what I was talking about. So one of them is the ingress VLAN for the DPU management traffic. And the other is the egress VLAN for the DPU management traffic. I'm talking about upstream. So the ingress is what the vendor or the DPU sends and the egress is what the network expects or the network means the operator's network expects. So if anyone suggests better names for that, uh, please feel free to comment and I could uh, yeah, take those yeah. suggestions and put in different names. Yeah, just because you mentioned egress and e ingress and egress, maybe having mm -hmm. that there, that would be useful. Okay, yeah, I could also put in some comments on that. Uh, similar thing for the ANCB, I mean, Vila. Yeah. Excuse me, uh, sorry. Is it always one? Uh, tech in ingress and egress. 
I mean, I mean uh, single it, time. It, it may be, I mean, a, any operator may use this DPUs in their field. Yeah. Okay. Is the case same in all of the operators? When they use the DPU, they have only one egress and one egress? You mean single tag versus double yes. tag? Right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, at least what I have uh, heard of till now is so that the DPU management traffic is uh, single tag. I have not heard of. Uh, um, yeah, that yeah, that, <clears throat> yeah, that is true. I mean, we, it, it, the DPU also supports untagged, but uh, but it is either untagged or single tagged. But you can specify in the DHCP with which the um, um, the in, in the DHCP there's according to the standard here three hundred one uh, ways to configure which VLAN to be used there as a vendor DPU management VLAN. Okay. Um, then we have uh, one more uh, value saying that, uh, so there is a requirement uh, from uh, Dutch Telecom that the PBITs should be remote in the upstream. So uh, we have a, a value here saying that what is the value that you want to remark the PBITs with? That's another uh, input. And then you have the tech profile ID to be used for this, uh, for this traffic as well as the upstream and downstream bandwidth profile. And along with that, you have a list of FTTB subscriber info, right? And if you look inside that, for each of the subscribers, you have an ANP tag, an S tag, and again, a tech profile ID for this subscriber, which tech profile to use, and then upstream bandwidth profile and downstream bandwidth profile. Now, what are this ANP and S tag? Right. So the S tag is the same as in the case of uh, FTTH, so a subscriber tag. And uh, this is the tag uh, by which this subscriber is uh, known within the operator's network, but, and is unique within an OLT. The ANP tag is the tag by which but is the tag value, which, uh, sorry, how do I put it? Yeah, is the tag value of the incoming packets. So for subscriber one, say the ANP tag is 100 and his S tag might be say 500. So the, the requirement would be that the traffic entering into the uni is double tagged, right? And the ANP or the outer tag is 100 and the output on the OLT NNI should be 500. So the value here would be 100 and this should be this would be 500. For another subscriber on the same DPU, the value could be say whatever, 200 and the stack could be say 600, right? So these values are all configured into the SADIS database by some of these applications like VAP or Power, things like that. But this information would be made available uh, to the owner subs through the SADIS interface. Perhaps it would also be good if, if we rename the other one to ingress egress to rename this too, because I believe the the the, the naming A and P is Dutch Telecom specific. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe I can put a comment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Amit, yeah. Sorry again, a question. Maybe I I confused a bit here about the tags and also bandwidth profile. So we have a technology profile ID there, and I think we have the capabilities to add and remove tags in the technology profile. So is there? I mean, is there a way that we can do it in technology profiles or not? I mean, why do we put these tags? extra text into into here uh, sorry but this is something that i am unaware of uh, i didn't know that we have a provision of putting the 
tags inside the technology profile. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. It's it's uh, subscri subscriber info here probably uh, inside this for the other service also. So may maybe what you're referring to here is the unitag info in Sadis yeah. that looks basically an extended version of this information. So one yes, of the sir. question I had was why we need to define a new class and we yes. can't reuse what we have. Yes, I mean, I don't know if it's in the technology profiles or outside the technology profiles, but there are something in Sadis which enables us to add any take from uni and or remove them also at something in the pole side, etc. So we, we have all these capabilities in place. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe we can uh, discuss on that. Um, and same is for that with yeah. profiles, I think we also have the capabilities to I mean assign any bandwidth to any subscribers or why do we have this here in another structure yeah so uh, what i so what i had proposed here is not to use the the unitag list right there isn't a, too much of a, a strong reasoning behind it because it looks to be much simpler here but yeah i will i will relook at that and see if we can leverage that and not uh, not introduce this, this new items here. So yeah, I'll, I'll look into that. In any case, I think that uh, um, we would need some of these extensions placed in the existing code if, uh, if we decide to extend the existing ones instead of creating the new ones. So some of these items will still be present. So. Yeah, I think uh, we can we can look into the uh, pros and cons of that, whether to introduce uh, newer elements or modify the existing elements, right? Uh, but uh, for now, let's focus on more from the concept perspective, really. Uh, I think we should make some progress and then, yeah, uh, we can evaluate the implementation detail, right? Whether to uh, introduce new ones or modify the existing ones. Okay, so if the status information is clear, uh, then I would want to let me see this one, right? The configuration needed in the pond for FTTB. So here, basically, what we are talking about is the uh, tcont gem port and the tags. Cover this first. Uh, so here, what you would see is. Uh, for the DPU management and ANCP traffic, we would use a single TCONT and one gem port, right? For this kind of traffic. And here, what we are showing is the ingress at the ONU uni and the egress at the OLT NNI. So here we're saying that it's a single tag packet, VID is DPU vendors VID and any PBIT, and the egress should be uh, the width that the network operator wants for the DPU management and the PBIT should be remarked to seven. Similarly for uh, ANCP, uh, it will be vendors ANCP width, any PBIT and remarked to uh, PBIT seven and network ANCP. And uh, this the vice versa in case of the downstream traffic, right? Here, here I have one question. Yeah. I understood that the network DPU management and the network ANCP values for the VID is both four. Is my understanding right? I'm, I'm not sure whether Manuel can answer this question. I thought that um, there's a goal to you know map both into the same VLAN and not distinguish them. Is it correct? Uh, Manuel is on the call. Manuel, you'd want to take that question? Or I mean, I mean, if you know that, I don't know. 
Yeah, I mean, Hamid, if you want to go ahead, please go ahead, please, because I, I have to admit, I was just able to join and still need to catch up on where exactly you are. So, uh, yeah, I, so, I think, so, uh, yeah, please go yeah, ahead. So, yeah, so what I can tell you is that it's still under discussion at this point of time. I think, yes, there is a goal to have uh, both of them uh, the same value, but it's still under discussion and uh, the pros and cons of it uh, across the various components are being uh, looked at. Yes, because it would influ influence, you know, the other mapping rule, which would that then not be possible, right? The the reverse mapping would not be possible in the, if the p-bit is any and the network DPU management and the network ANCP are both value four, then nobody knows how to map that. Because yes, so, yes. so okay. that is okay. that is given, right? If the network DPU management and network ANCP are mm -hmm. the same, then mm -hmm. this also have to be this this also have to be the same value. It not it may not be equal to network but they cannot be two different values else we cannot segregate the traffic yeah and then uh, this collapses into one rule right yes, so uh, yes. yes so that has to be sure that you understand okay so that is an open issue yeah mm -hmm. so but but for now we are assuming that uh, they are different and uh, we could work with the floor rules. Yes, if they turn out to be the same values, as I have uh, put in a comment, that the second floor rule will just uh, fail. But I think that should be okay. Because it would boil down to be the being the same floor rule. It will be a duplicate floor rule. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, this is the specific uh, p-bit mapping. Okay, so for subscribers uh, traffic, uh, uh, the proposal is to use one t-cont per subscriber with uh, four gem ports, right? So for a 16 port DPU, there would be a total of 16 t-cons for the subscribers plus one t-cont for the DPU management and ANCP traffic and 16 times four gem ports for the subscribers and one more gem port for the DPU management. And the p-bit mapping is uh, mentioned here, 5-6 going into PQ0. So that is the highest priority. And uh, P01 going to PQ3, which is the lowest priority. And again, now uh, we show here the ingress and egress. So the ingress, uh, the outer vid is the ANP tag, as I was saying, and the inner vid could be anything, but it's double tag. And uh, at the egress of the ULT uh, on the NNI, the outer of which should be the subscriber's S tag that the operator wants to identify the subscriber with. And the inner width would be any, it would be unchanged, as well as the P bit should be unchanged. So it's just the outer VLAN uh, that gets swapped or overwritten by at the OLT. Um, so next we have the flow rules. Uh, I don't think it would make too much sense to go through each and every flow rule in detail. So I would leave that to uh, the team to go through those and uh, post your comments. And if there is something that needs to be discussed, maybe we uh, do it in the next DST, uh, specifically on the- uh, Unless, Amit, Amit, yeah? Amit, unless there are any questions right now, if people yeah. have already went through this and have questions on the flows, please feel free to yeah. uh, ask. Yeah, sure. Or else I would propose to jump to the corners of changes. Uh, should we yeah. maybe start with the, the yeah. Volta changes? One, one moment, perhaps, to the page um, that, that is currently displayed. There is a yeah. question from Michael, uh, you know, where the VLAN translation is happening. Is it, you know, on the, you know, or so the last answer, yeah? Uh, so that would be also my interest. What is, because the, if this is different, then uh, in, in there is already a scenario in which, uh, you know, the so-called BNG scenario at Deutsche Telekom in which this is configured. And uh, in this scenario, the VLAN translation happens on the ONU site and not on the OLT. So, so if there is a translation of ANCP and NetConf VLAN to another VLAN, this translation is done on the ONU site. And it seems to be that this comment here implies 
that is now to be done on the OLT side, which uh, we are not sure now. So, so maybe uh, Amit, maybe I can say a word on this. Good. Yeah, if we if we are really talking about management and ANCP stuff, uh, that. I think the, the ANCP stuff is is, uh, is, um, yeah, is unchanged, uh, and the management uh, VLAN that has to be changed, uh, and that will be changed at the uni or virtual uni port uh, between the switching part and the ONU part of the DPU in the BNG scenario. And for the customer traffic, that is completely unchanged. Uh, that uh, that comes uh, directly from from the GFast port and uh, and goes transparently through the ONU part and OLT part. And there is a difference uh, in between the BNG scenario and our Access 4.0 scenario, because in the Access 4.0 scenario, we want to generalize uh, the the DPU configuration. So that means all the um, on each DPU, the first GFast port has the outer tech 101, for instance, um, maybe 201 or whatever. Uh, but it's the same on every DPU. Uh, and then the OLT on the OLT side, it has to be changed to these unique uh, uh, or unified uh, STEC for the customer. So that's a little bit, or not a little bit, that's a, a difference uh, between the both scenarios. Okay. So I mean, hope yeah. for, hopefully it makes clearer. Otherwise, uh, yeah, let's, uh, we, can, we can sort it out more in detail in, in a separate session. So what? Yeah, so, so, so therefore in this section, which deals about DPU and ANCP, it is right that our understanding is that this is done on the ONU side, uh, you know, configured via ONCI. It is, it is uh, in the BNG scenario, yes. Um, if we have to do it exactly the same in Access 4.0, it's maybe we are, or not maybe, uh, we are still in the design phase, so, there could be changes, but uh, I'm not aware of any, let me say it in this way. So I, I would say, yes, you are right in the, uh, for the management uh, and maybe ANCP, uh, we, don't, we would uh, translate or change it on the DPU, on the ONU side, I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, so um, you're correct that uh, it, so yes, so, you're correct, right? It can be changed either in the ONU or at the OLT. And the proposal right now is to change it at the OLT. So uh, as you can see, said VLAN is coming on this OLT flow route. Uh, it can be done in the ONU as well. Uh, I proposed it here just to keep it simpler because uh, even for the subscriber traffic, the setting of the VLAN is happening at the OLT. But, um, if it helps, and also I think it's it's lesser complicated, right, to do it at the OLT than at the ONU. Let's say save some OMCI. But uh, if there is a strong uh, reasoning or a wish to do it at the ONT, maybe we should reconsider this proposal. Yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, let's do that internally afterwards, okay. and then. Yeah. We come up with the final decision here. Okay. So maybe I would. Okay, um, so any other questions on the flow rules? Else I would move to the uh, bonus apps. So Andrea, I don't know how good we are doing on time because I think- uh, I have Not been... good. <laughs> so... we, have we have 10 minutes left. Uh, okay. uh, we will definitely have to take this up uh, uh, next time as, as well. Okay. So anyways, let me try to rush through this a uh, little bit. And uh, maybe next time we keep it a little shorter, assuming that people would have gone through the document a little bit. Okay, so um, 
here um, what I'm showing is the FTTB uh, flows creation. So first the DPU management and ANCP flows creation and then the subscriber flows creation. This matches with uh, this add flows for management and ANCP, which I showed earlier. And the subscriber part matches with add flows for subscriber. Right, so uh, so the user here, I have shown it just as a user without the names of web power or anything. So it configures or writes that FTTB subscriber data that I showed of the SADIS into the SADIS database and then calls an API. So the names are not frozen till now, right? So uh, the names that I've put here are more from an understanding perspective. So it calls an API on the OLT app saying, okay, provision the DPU. So uh, what the OLT app would need to do is provision trap rules for trapping DHCP packets on the NNI interface, as well as the logical port corresponding to this particular DPU. It does that onto Volta. And uh, when the packets are trapped, right, uh, especially the packet on the uni, right, or the logical port, that would be uh, sent to uh, something. Okay, yeah, so that would be sent to this, what I've marked here as new FTTB Mac learner. So here we have proposed, if you go into uh, this section that we create a new uh, app called FTTB Mac learning app, but there is already an open comment from Andrea saying that uh, maybe we should look into the existing Mac learning app and uh, we should be able to leverage that and add on the functionality that we need and not come up with a new app altogether. So that is still uh, under consideration. So for now, let's not pay too much attention onto the word new. Let us assume that this functionality is there either in a new app or changes have been made to the existing app to support this functionality. Yeah, so uh, coming up. I mean, just a, just, a, yeah. just a note on that. While while you're considering a few things, feel mm -hmm. free uh, to reach out to me uh, because yeah. I, I, did, I do know the Mac Learning app a fair bit, but yeah. especially, and uh, I'm sorry if I'm volunteering you, but Mahir and his team knows it especially well. Okay. So uh, if you have any doubts and questions, feel free to shoot an email to us. And uh, I would try to avoid I would strongly try to avoid uh, duplicating the app, given that it's effectively doing kind of the same things. Uh, but yet again, let's not dive into right now. If you have any questions while you're evaluating, send them to us and we can make sure that uh, we discuss. Yeah, sure. So uh, yeah, the, the only thing that I would want to uh attention to is how much of a change that we would need to make to the existing app because uh, I would not want to go into something which breaks a lot of things right because the app is being used by other operator workflows as well and uh, if you have to if things break and we need to fix a lot of things that uh, becomes too much of an overhead but that's the only reason. agreed but yeah but, but we will but it would directly depend on the amount of changes and uh, and how the changes come in, right? If the changes come in, say it is configurable and it does not touch the existing workflows, yeah, yeah why not? We, we don't need to create a new app in that case. Okay, uh, so the the DHCP packet is grabbed by this uh, MacLearner app, right? And using the packet, it learns the MAC address and uh, it is able to provide this learning to the OLT app. So this detail of how exactly it provides is again something which is uh, internal to the MacLearner app. Uh, what I know is it is using the UNOST host service to populate it there and the OLT app uh, is listening to the events from the host service and through, via that it will be able to know whenever a new you know, MAC address pops up on a particular VLAN. Also uh, along with that it would not eat up the packet that you used it, it, it used to learn the MAC address, but rather relay it in the same direction at, as it was supposed to go. It would not modify the packet at all, but just relay it. Uh, this is just an optimization uh, so that the DHCP process does not take a long time. Okay, uh, once the OLT app gets the MAC address, now it would be able to provision the flow rules 
that are needed to switch the management uh, and ANCP traffic because the MAC address is a requirement for that. And once it has in, uh, got that, it would push this flow rules for the DPU and ANCP switching uh, of traffic to Volta. So that's pretty much it for the DPU flows creation or management NCP flows creation. For the subscriber flows creation, again, uh, what would happen is that the user is going to update an entry in that, uh, in this thing, in the FTTP subscriber info and push it to SADIS. So basically update the entry in the SADIS database and it would call an API on the OLT app saying that provision the FTTP subscriber. The OLT app can yeah then look up on the information that is there on SADIS and then it can uh, add the flow rules that we have proposed right onto Volta. Any questions on this? Um, okay, so it looks like. Uh, there's some text out here, which I will not go through. And even on the OLT app, we have pretty much talked about it. Uh, for the flows removal, I think this is uh, pretty much uh, vice versa or uh, of the one that we saw for addition of flows. So I think we can skip this as well. And we are out of time. So this is this this was basically what we have on the ONOS or what we have proposed on the ONOS part and uh, the flow rules, the configuration and the general concept. What we still need to go through are the changes that are suggested in Volta. Um, so Andrea, should we stop here? Because I don't think it makes sense to talk about it for the next four minutes and then stop. Uh, yeah, I think this is a proper time to stop. Uh, although there is a lot uh, uh, that uh, still needs to be covered, I think that uh, there is enough context also for people to go and look at this document. So I would really, really, really appreciate everybody spending uh, uh, some time, especially those of you who know the system, uh, in, um, in spending some time reviewing the document and providing a meet with uh, feedback and comments. As we have seen, there are many comments on the document already, so please go ahead and add yours. Uh, I know uh, that uh, there are already uh, comments on like uh, the Volta uh, stuff, the BBC implementation and things like that. So uh, feel free to add them. Um, in the meantime, Amit and his team will go and uh, address some of those that we've already outlined today. And then uh, we will discuss uh, uh, them further next uh, next week. Unless, uh, uh, Amit, you feel that there is a time bound for the discussion and you would appreciate having it done before that. Otherwise, next Tuesday would be fine by me. Um, yeah, if we could have a discussion earlier, that would help but uh, depends on the availability of people. Okay, because let me, we, let we me. Need, we need everyone to be available. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me. So probably what I could uh, propose, even though I'm not going to be available, is actually Thursday. So in two days from now, the same mm -hmm. time. Um, I would uh, turn and ask if uh, or anybody from ONF would be able to host the meeting if I schedule it. So Theo, Girish, uh, Hardik, uh, uh, Leah, anybody can host the meeting for me? Would that be possible? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. So I will uh, I will uh, I will schedule right after this call a meeting on Thursday. Uh, hopefully, many many people can join. Uh, it's the same time, so it's supposedly it's a time good for everybody. And usually Thursday is not a meeting heavy day, so. Is there anybody that have a major concern with the meeting at the same time? So eight to nine Thursday Pacific, five to 6 p.m. Central European? No? Okay, then I'll add it to the public court calendar and I will make sure to send an email to the Volta TST, oh, sorry, to the Volta Discuss mailing list with uh, the details. So all of you can join. And thanks a lot, uh, everybody, for, for this.
So in the next call, we will start off with the Volta changes and try to cover off that part. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, and I will uh, publish the recording. There were other topics on the on the agenda for today, but nothing major. Uh, we will we can cover them next week. Thanks, everybody. Have Thanks a great the rest of your day. Cheers. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Bye.